A big weather pattern clash is on the way as we head towards the end of this week, through the weekend, and even towards next week with cooler in the north, warmer in the southern United States, and this is going to create an active storm pattern, especially in between where we're going to see some feisty severe weather possibly pop up. I've got details on the severe weather and the entire weather pattern ahead right here, so stick around. Alright, happy Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, whenever you're watching everybody. Thanks so much for joining me here at One Nation Weather. The model maps I use for, in my videos are from Weatherbell, so make sure you check out their free trial link right down there in the description to get the same ones for yourself. Also, here's that quick friendly reminder I always do that if you're new to the channel and you want more consistent, accurate, and easy to understand forecasts in the future, hit that subscribe button after this video is done, especially if you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump into the pattern ahead using our future radar from the GFS model. It's really in line with a lot of what the European model or other weather model is showing, but there are a few differences. I'll point some of those out as we go through this overview here of the pattern ahead. But let's go ahead and jump right towards what you were just seeing on screen, which is your Wednesday, June 26th of 2024, zooming on in on the eastern United States, because that's where we're going to have this low pressure system centered somewhere near Pennsylvania and New York with that counterclockwise flow. What that does is brings in some southerly flow right on up there against the cold front that's actually going to be draped back behind it towards parts of Oklahoma. Once we get some of that southwesterly flow trying to drag on through a lot of that region, that's going to help elevate our storm chances into the afternoon and evening, and some of those storms could also be severe really along the entirety of that front, but especially right under that low where you've got more of that direct southerly push into parts of Ohio, uh, West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, as well as New Jersey there with those winds right along the surface kind of pumping on in at some of that moisture. Dew points well into the 60s and 70s across the region, meaning that we have plenty of moisture to support some severe weather. We'll have that kind of moisture there on Wednesday. Then as we go towards Thursday, we'll see isolated showers and storms down in the southeast, but that area I circled here back towards the northwest Coming out of the northwestern United States and into the north central plains, this is that area we're going to be watching really the potential for severe weather on our Thursday as a low pressure system. A new one moves out of the Rockies. This is our next one that's going to follow a very similar trajectory to the one that is going on on Wednesday here that I just told you about. This one coming out of Montana, Wyoming, all the way to the Dakotas, as well as Nebraska and Kansas. This whole area really needing to keep an eagle eye out for some severe weather on Thursday. And this, this low, as I zoom back in on it here, it's going to be moving a little bit further east going into our Friday. Now, we'll probably be seeing some showers and thunderstorms from parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin down to Missouri and surrounding areas on our Friday afternoon. Most of these not necessarily severe. Many of these just left over and continuing eastward on the chug from the night before. But it, I just zoomed in on that so I could really show you how that low pressure system is going to keep some of the storms with it, even as there's not much daytime heating. By the time we get some daytime heating, though, between the end of our Friday, even going into the evening and overnight hours, look at this. This is Saturday, June 29th at 2 a.m. So even into the middle of the night, Friday night here, we're looking at showers and thunderstorms, at least according to this model. The European shows a little bit less coverage over there towards Canada. Kansas, but the GFS certainly showing a lot more firing on up as well as even into parts of Illinois, Indiana, even through Missouri and over there towards Kansas. So we'll definitely have to focus on where these models are showing some of the storms. But right now, the GFS model indicating storms there Friday. Then as we go towards Saturday, we could be watching a little bit more severe weather as this heads east. This looks very similar to our Wednesday setup, doesn't it? Other than the fact that some of the storms could also be on over there as far west as Kansas and Oklahoma. Just a few days later, we've got a very similar low pressure system bringing up that southerly moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, dragging it on up through the Ohio Valley, dragging it up the east coast, and consequently, we're seeing showers and storms from even some parts of Alabama, Georgia, and the Carolinas, all the way up there to where severe weather would be a little more likely through the Ohio Valley and into the northeast, closer to that jet stream energy. Very similar setup as we've got that low moving through Canada. Then this is trying to move out quickly, but it might be a little bit slower since it's a little bit further north with the actual low than our previous one. So as we head towards our Sunday, the European model even has this lagging a little bit more behind. So places like Tennessee, Kentucky, and surrounding areas could even get included in some of the storms. But the GFS definitely indicating in that area I just circled, we could continue to see showers and storms going into our Sunday. And then another storm system could move through the north central United States, heading a little further down the line. Now, I want to show you the mid-level jet stream here, 15 to 20,000 feet above people in America's heads using the European model. It's a very similar setup to what the GFS model is showing because this is more of a broad sense of where overall systems are, even into the atmosphere here. And what this shows you here as we go towards our Wednesday, so backtracking a little bit to our Wednesday where we've got the showers and storms from Pennsylvania back down there towards Arkansas and surrounding spots. Notice why I told you the severe weather threat's a little higher coming out of Ohio and into some areas of the Mid-Atlantic, even New York City being included in the slight risk from the Storm Prediction Center as I filmed this for our Wednesday. 
it's because we've got those greens and yellows. We've got some 40 to 60 knot mid-level winds moving through the region there on Wednesday. And that's certainly something to keep in mind because that is a little bit of a trough. Our next trough will be moving into parts of the Mountain West late Thursday heading into early Friday. That area of green you see coming from Nevada all the way in over there towards parts of Montana, regardless of its strength, out ahead of it there in eastern Montana, eastern Wyoming, parts of Colorado as well, coming on out there into the north central and even some parts of the central plains. That's where we're going to be watching the severe weather threat Thursday. I show you this jet stream so you can really line up what I was showing you with the precipitation pattern with where these jet stream features are so you know a little bit more exactly where that severe weather threat's going to be. Here we go towards our Friday. Notice the jet streams kind of over some of those spots in parts of Minnesota. That's why I think that the threat might be a little bit lower there than in areas further south for severe weather on Friday, even if some storms from the night before move on through, because normally you got to be kind of under these features to get the severe weather threat. But this is a trough. It's an area of enhanced winds in the jet stream. So underneath it, from Nebraska and Kansas to the Midwest, we'll be watching some storms Friday. Then as we go towards Saturday and the upcoming weekend here, as the system progresses eastward, it's going to really just kind of turn into more of a strong flow in the jet stream. It's not going to be much of a trough anymore. You don't see a little appendage on the jet stream of more intense energy. Instead, you see broader 40 to 60 knot winds from, say, really even in Wyoming, where I don't have circled all the way and over there towards Pennsylvania. Underneath it, that's where that front's going to be draped, and that could even move towards the southeastern U.S like I said, towards Sunday, bringing some severe storms. To track out pieces of energy that I just showed you from Wednesday all the way into the upcoming weekend, we're going to use my own W severe scale as well as my severe zones graphic. I'll talk about severe zones when we get to it, but for the severe scale, you're going to see ones, twos, and threes. You need to be familiar with them for this video. One meaning low certainty, but a few severe storms appear possible. Two meaning isolated severe weather is expected. Three meaning more of an all hazards threat for a few severe storms in more scattered fashion across the area. And what we're looking at here as we go towards our Wednesday, this is our June 26th, and it could be an active one across a long corridor of at least isolated severe weather because that is likely for our Wednesday into our Wednesday night here along the front with higher chances for more scattered coverage from the Ohio River area to the Mid-Atlantic. Leftover storms from Tuesday night will drive the threat in the Arkansas region. So some of the storms from our Tuesday night as I film this video dropping down out of Iowa into Missouri surrounding spots, those could drive that level two of seven isolated risk in Oklahoma, Arkansas, and northern Louisiana. But that afternoon storm development from Tennessee all the way over there towards New York City, that's where we'll see damaging winds, hail, and maybe even some isolated tornadoes the further northeast you go. And I really think coming out of Ohio over there towards New York City, that's the best chance for severe weather. Wednesday, then as we go towards Thursday, severe weather moving out of Montana. Moving into the Dakotas, that's where our best chance for severe weather is, but a broad and possibly significant severe weather setup driven by large hail especially is possible on Thursday as that potent storm system, that trough associated with it, exits the western United States as I've been showing you. Damaging winds and tornadoes also appear possible, so stay tuned for new updates on that. Now looking at the severe zones graphic for Friday, this just shows you where I have the highest confidence, not that there couldn't be severe weather elsewhere as well, but just the highest confidence in at least isolated severe weather in a corresponding 2 of 7 on my own W severe scale. That is from Kansas and Nebraska over to parts of southern Minnesota and southern Wisconsin for Friday. And then Saturday, yes, we'll probably see severe weather along a quarter from Kansas and Oklahoma, maybe all the way on over there towards some of the New York City areas once again, uh, Albany, New York to Boston, Massachusetts, all those spots. The best chance for 2 of 7s on my scale, though, is there in Kansas and Oklahoma and then in some parts of the Ohio Valley. And as we get a lot of these storms, we're going to see precipitation at on up. The GFS and the Euro on pretty good agreement on where the heaviest rain is overall going to be. So focus on the trends here as I circle stuff. First of all, here from our Tuesday night as I film this video, this does include the rain from our Tuesday evening. That's important to note as I show this graphic. All the way just through our Thursday, June 27th. So this really encompasses a lot of the Wednesday storms. A lot of heavy rain here from the Central Plains over to Maine. Half an inch to an inch being a widespread thing in a lot of these spots from thunderstorms, but we will see local pockets that could get upwards of two to three inches of rain. That's why it's important in some of those yellow and orange shades, especially in surrounding spots, make sure you're prepared for at least some isolated and scattered flooding. Turn around, don't drown if you are on any flooded roadways or near them. Then as we go towards the upcoming weekend and beyond, this is through Monday afternoon, July 1st. So through the very end of June here, the heaviest rain continuing to add on up with our next front from parts of the Central Plains and Midwest, all the way on over there towards the New York area, as well as Boston, Massachusetts, all these spots. You know, I'm highlighting a lot of the same areas again because this is where we're seeing a lot of the heaviest precipitation. Watch for the flooding there, but where we need the rain down here in the southeast, we also will probably get some of it in the Carolinas, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. Some local thunderstorm totals could get anywhere from an inch to three inches of rain as well, so that is some good rainfall, some solid totals moving into these regions. 
One thing that I do have to talk about as well, though, now that we're past the precipitation and the storms, we need to talk about the heat. And going towards our Wednesday, June 26, 2024, we've got that front draped over a lot of the eastern and southern United States. And out ahead of it, that's where the temperatures are going to be the warmest. This collection of models forming the European model ensembles here indicates that we could see temperatures 10 to 15 degrees above average, particularly in the Carolinas, and then back on over there in Texas and Oklahoma. Meanwhile, to the north, this is that kind of split pattern where it's cooler in the north. Look at this, we're 5 to 10 degrees below normal for this time of the year in the Dakotas, Minnesota. Even a little bit more than that in some parts of Wisconsin and the upper peninsula of Michigan, where we've got the cooler winds behind that front moving over the lake. And that actually helps to keep things a little bit even more cooler than they could be if that lake were not there. So keep that in mind up there in that region. It will continue to be very chilly for this time of the year over the north central United States by about 10 to 15 degrees. And when I say chilly, it's all a relative thing for our Thursday afternoon. South of that, though, from Texas and Oklahoma, notice over to the Carolinas, we're still not looking at a ton of relief. And where we are getting relief, a lot of that's just from thunderstorms that pop up after you get a lot of that heat and humidity. Mornings are also going to be pretty intense with a lot of humidity then, and I'll show you the exact temperatures day by day here in a second, or at least what the National Digital Forecast Database is expecting. But here we go towards the weekend, and this is when things turn a little bit more interesting, should I say. And this is from parts of Texas to the Ohio Valley. Yes, we're warmer than average across that entire area. Models indicating it's not going to be by a whole lot, but still 5 to 10 degrees above average this time of the year can cause a lot of heat, especially when it's been so warm recently. But now we've got greens in a broad, bigger area here coming out of Montana all the way to parts of Iowa as well as Minnesota Saturday afternoon behind that front. Remember, late Friday going into Saturday, we see those storms push out in the Midwest towards the Ohio Valley surrounding spots. And by Sunday, once this front pushes through, we could see relief for more areas than just the far northern corridor and the states that touch the Canadian border. Now we're starting to see Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio start to fill in on these 5 to even 15 degree below average temperatures. Definitely a trend that will need to be monitored as this cool down tries to continue sinking eastward and maybe even southeastward into early next week. Now what we're looking at here, 5 to 6 days of temperatures in any of these spots that I'm circling here that have circles over them. If you see these for our morning lows, which is what we're looking at right now, this is where you have temperatures that are so warm in the morning that since records have been kept, they have never been that warm for a minimum temperature on this day. So on June 26, 2024, it has never been this warm to start the day as it's expected to be in Idaho all the way down there to southwestern Arizona. Some parts of Texas where it'll be near 80, all the way over there to the mid-Atlantic where temperatures will be in the upper 70s. And by the afternoon Wednesday in the mid-Atlantic and southeast, it is just baking. That's that area that's going to be as much as 10 to 15 degrees above average for Wednesday. You're going to feel it. It's not going to be the most humid day, but in some parts of the Mid-Atlantic, it will be quite humid with temperatures pushing 100 across a lot of that region. Same goes over there in Oklahoma, Texas, and then a lot of that dry heat trying to push over 110 in some spots there in the far southwest, the desert southwest as well. Not abnormal necessarily for this time of the year there. What is a little abnormal, though, is north of where I just drew this arrow. That's where it's a little cooler than average from North Dakota to Minnesota, even on Wednesday here, as early as Wednesday. Temperatures in the 70s in the afternoon lows, you know, down into the 50s in many spots. But Thursday morning, what we're looking at here, still keeping it in the 70s, a lot further south. Whereas highs in the north central U.S. on Thursday are only in the 70s. So there's a lot of contrast here. But first of all, Thursday, where we could see some of that severe weather, you see those 90s pushing on up into the high plains in the front range. Again, let me rehash. 60s and 70s here in the Great Lakes, north central U.S., heading on over to the northeast. So definitely some relief, some of that rain cooled. But again, it's these hot spots, and they're literal and figurative here. The southwest U.S., the south central, and the southeast, these are pockets Wednesday and Thursday that are going to have a lot of the most intense heat. The mid-Atlantic will start to back off towards the back half of this week, at least a little bit, though, from the worst. Meanwhile, Friday at, uh, in the morning here, we're looking at some record warm lows there in parts of Oklahoma and Texas. By the afternoon, some record warm highs. Places like Oklahoma City could break a record warm high into the well into the triple-digit range there Friday afternoon as the worst heat Friday is going to be here from Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas over to places like Tennessee and Alabama. But again, any of these gray shades on screen, especially where you're starting to get into the 90s, that's dangerous heat. You want to be taking it seriously. If you don't have air conditioning, you want to try and find a free place that does have one, a shelter available for you. Goodness, 70s in the upper 70s, some low 80s. This is nauseating heat to wake up to in the morning. Step outside, you don't even feel relief. It feels almost like it should in the afternoon here with the humidity in the morning because you got that do that humidity. So Saturday morning, 
just try to stay indoors Saturday across a lot of that region. I just had circled there ahead of that next front. Meanwhile, we're back in the 40s up there in parts of Montana, Wyoming, even cooler maybe in some of the highest peaks. Saturday afternoon, yes, you're going to deal with some 90s even into some parts of Illinois, Indiana, and the Ohio Valley. You might not like that, but the cool down's right behind it. We've got 60s as far north there as parts of you know North Dakota and Minnesota, so that's not too much further north than where the 90s are. Sunday morning, you've got more 70s. Some of those breaking records here across the area I just had circled, even some 80s trying to get in the mix. And then the cool down begins, trying to make a run for Missouri, making a run for Illinois, making a run for Indiana, all these spots that have been so hot lately. And look at that. We'll continue to see some 50s north of this line here to start the day, Monday, July 1st. So we could kick off July with some cooler air up there. But south of the line, it's where we're going to continue to see a lot of the heat, not only in the afternoons, but also in the morning to the point where you're not really feeling much relief. And even if the temperatures cool down in some places of the southeastern United States, the south central, it's probably only going to be too average. So that is it with this update. Again, if you like my channel, if you like my content and you want more in the future, make sure you're not only subscribing, but also hitting that notification bell. There should be a bell icon right after you subscribe to turn on all notifications for the channel. Your phone will just buzz and you will get that update if you have a phone and that's what you watch me from. That's it for this video. Stay safe out there, everyone. I'll see you back Thursday or Friday. One Nation Weather.